Greetings everyone, hello and welcome back to Android 100 once more to Panagos to our, yeah, well, not so glorious uh, harbor area. But of course, we are trying to improve things all the time. One thing that I would like to improve now is my economy. So I was already talking about this last episode um, with uh, the bigger military budget that we have with the more expenses into um, higher tech um, industry we actually yeah well we actually lack a bit of money right now 3800 coin per minute is really not that good it needs to be closer to 10,000 at least for me to be comfortable in order to spend more in the future so what we can do for this one is oh well the first option of course is upgrades upgrades however is not everything but let's start this episode with upgrades because I do love upgrades a lot <laughs> because usually it makes the city better in a lot of ways we got 300 tons of timber available right now and of course we can use a lot of that timber not really for shipbuilding at the moment but rather just yeah getting those districts up to speed up to the current let's say year that we are in of course right we want to move away from farmers we want to move away from agricultural societies more into artisans right now and that means, of course, upgrading those people into higher tiers. This brings us down to 57 um, timber that we have right now, which we can then also use for a few more workers that we have into artisan terrain. So especially here in this area, we have a lot of services fulfilled right now. Like we have the school, we have the university, we have the theater and we have a church, right? So that means in this area, the real estate prices are insane. You have everything you need. You have beautiful um, green areas as well, right? And everything is within a short walking distance. And this is really the ideal district that we have and of course it is here where people upgrade the most where also um, the highest taxpayers are coming into into our city there that is all right now i was already speaking about the timber we also have the steel beams problem right now and we do have a couple of options to boost those things the first one is the first one is of course building more crafting more building more mines um, or, or mining more ores and then crafting steel ingots out of that, smelting it. The problem though is we're limited by that and we're already limited by that pretty soon. So my alternative is that we take some, yes, some materials. We already have these spectacles that we found in a battle not too long ago. And we take some weapons because they're actually quite valuable and get them over here to Eli. Because as you know, Eli is really good for item boosting problem with Eli is he's a bit dangerous so I'm going to send over my warships there too so the clipper that is on its way now mudlark is getting protected by three royal warships as well they're going to join now I would like to check real quick how's our sta status with Anne Harlow it is on ceasefire by the way can we do something with you not really at the moment because we also have the newspaper edition that I would like a lot. So the negative 30 consumption is a baseline for me. And we actually did not implement consumerism last time. I would like to do this now again since we have a lot of influence. And I'm going to keep this one here, enemy siege repelled. So that was the attack on the Nolar, um, where we have now the 50% reduction in riots. I like this a lot. And this already brings me, <laughs> hooray, to 15,000 on income. And of course, I said I would be comfortable with 10,000. That doesn't mean that 15,000 is really enough and we want to push this. We are not at war with the pirate right now, so I really should my should use my advantage here with um, being close to Eli. And that is getting my shibbies over there and getting cracking on some, on some trading. A destruction quest by Eli. Let's just accept it flat out. Where are the ships for that? Over there! It's just some frigates. My clipper has arrived, so let's get the the royal warships on to the target of this frigate here. Perhaps we can catch it and get some good trade out of that. Out of the weapons and especially the spectacles, we make another 68,000 credits. That's perfect. Let's have a look at the items that Eli has at the moment. They're not great. We have the bakery. That is a productivity increase. And it's also giving me chocolate, which would be insane. But unfortunately, other than that, we don't really have good items there at the moment uh, residences provide a bit more workforce don't need that much or well workshops don't need that much workforce anymore all sounds nice and dandy this is actually one of the first ones the bicycle factory sewing machine factory and tools workshop produce 30 percent more and there are no longer um, workers or actually no longer artisans employed in them but rather workers 
Sounds nice in theory, it's not that powerful, especially not for the price given here. Uh, yeah, that's it, really. I can't I can't really re-roll that often. Well, let's face it, we don't have that much money to re-roll. Let's chase that frigate, it seems rather slow. And Eli is having a hard time accepting that one of his prisoners has been pardoned because they have friends in high places. He suggests you take the matter outside of the law and sink his ship. Alright! Problem is, this prisoner is right now on its way to Princess Ching, probably fleeing. So while the sun goes up or down, it's staying still right now. I think it's going up. We should chase it. We should chase that frigate. And I think we are actually able to catch up. We are sailing with the wind. And I do have just some very cool shippies there. We need to get a bit closer if we want to make the, the trade. And there we are, into firing range. And we should be able to, to do this mission here. Let's be careful to not run into any other fleet though, right? The pirate is okay for now, but we should be careful not. And there it is, ship is down. And let's just take that loot here with us. And with that, bring it back to Eli, getting some good rewards out of that. Especially that item is really nice. The 20,000 credits, of course, are also nifty. Let's get this home. And my clipper here waits for some better items to come. Next up on the list is a reinforcing Manoler. Um, we know we need a few more weapons over there. So I'm just going to get a few of my resources to Manoler right away. With that, we can build a few more flamethrowers. Nebuchadnezzar is my ship for this. Off it goes and I'm not expecting much trouble out of this. Where's my shipyard? We will need to build some two more clippers there, right? Dropping us down there a bit on the influence as well, but it's not too bad for the moment. Now, what is my steel surplus? We should have some steel surplus here. It's at five. We can use this in two ways. The first one is I would like to build one more steelwork. It's probably going to be the last one, right? So we can just safely squeeze it in here as well. So it's kind of like hiding behind those sewing machine factories. And the cool thing is, first of all, of course, we can boost them, right? With a trade unit, we can also boost them with uh, electricity then soon. Yeah, yeah, this is just passing by, so it's no real threat there to us. All right, so with that, we have a bit more steel beams coming in. The demand for them is only going to increase from now on. Um, I would also like to build two more, now one more, sewing machine factory for the moment, because this is already consuming two um steel per minute then as well right so the consumption is rather high on this and with that we are dropping down on the steel to yeah having a surplus of one at the best of times i think are we actually we're not doing it here and we're also not boosting those guys here at the moment with the working conditions this might be still an option that we have now i would like to use the sewing machine um surplus if we have that that's only at four right now right so that's 80 tons every 20 minutes that is not great so let's go ahead and use the last iron deposits that we have there is one more up here and this one we can definitely use for another iron mine and i think we should have one more coal deposit somewhere that is not being used at the moment or are we using all of them? We are using all of the coal now. Looks like it. Yeah, it's at six. All right. What's the advantage here right now? It's equal. All right. We are out of raw materials in Panagos with that. Um, we still have V over here. We still have 50 workers there, so I can use those three deposits that I have. But I will need a commute pier um, for this to work. And a commute pier is rather expensive. Um, with the reinforced concrete and window requirement but it is something i would like to do as well now so let's start with building the commute pier in panagos it should be probably pretty close to my to my industry zone right so we will have it somewhere here by my trade post or we have it up here on the piers i think this could also work just nicely right and there's then the the main pier for <laughs> water workers that are then entering Panagos here with the boat um, and then we just need the same thing for to we we have the sea sponge still as one of my ships 
available. While this is working, oh, we are really down on the steel beams. I wanted to build another export office. Um, we can do this, but the 30 tons will not make it possible for me to build a commute pier anymore. And I want to build a commute pier, right? And the commute pier costs me 50 steel beams. This is... This is bad, so we can't even afford that. Wait a second, Toby, I have 50. All right, so let's get us the remaining steel beams in the Pentagos, and let's get us also windows and concrete over so we can connect the workforces. And with that, we'll be able to use all the mines here freely and even more, right? So hops plantations might be a good target here since there's the hops fertility. This is now working. With the steel beams, we have the problem. We do produce seven per minute right now. That's not ideal. What I can do in the meantime is I can take my frigate here to RG and purchase some steel beams. That's always possible. Eli, I think, is waiting in my harbor. Yep, because we have the proof, of course. That still needs to be turned in for this quest here, the incorruptible. <laughs> and it's a part. It's a part of a, a quest line, in fact. So there will be more quests like this one coming out of it. Right, so we can follow the story along if we want to. We killed now one of his pardoned inmates. Uh, let's have a quick look again at my boosting situation. Unfortunately, it's really not great. Let's reroll once more. Ah, steelworks, iron mine, coal mine, furnace, large steelworks, productivity increased by 20%. That might actually be something. And there's the bakery again. This might be good. Uh, let's take this one. It's a small item, no doubt. But we can we can make use of a trade unit with that. We can start. Southern Cross has arrived. Let's purchase 150 tons of steel beams for the 20,000. And let's get this back home to Panagos. This is a nice boost. Because with that, we can continue upgrading houses then as well. Because most of them do require steel beams. Meanwhile, the fleet is returning back home. Oh, also a very damaged clipper from the New World. Coming in with uh, 200 tons of cotton. Not in a very good condition this one is, unfortunately. So there must be the pirate at hand here once again. And thank you very much for doing business. And we do get the Lord Stringer's stringent usury laws. Uh, marketplace, central bank, really crappy item. And we're just going to sell it for the 50,000 and be happy about that. And then we also have then our iron founder boosting my steelworks with that. Do we have any other items that would help us? The bakery we still have. And hmm, soap factory. Hmm, soap factory production increase. But that's it. So with the item at hand, let's go ahead and build us the trade union. The first one is free of charge. How very great. And we can now use our iron founder in here. And as we can see, they're lightening up. And with that, we have the first steelworks boosted. I do have these two canneries here that I don't really need in this area. Um, if I will ever need them, I don't know. Let's build the the next steelworks in here as well, so we can boost all of this for now. Oh wait a second, this is not looking not looking clean. Let's make it like so, much better. Then we have the the weapon factory and the, the cannery in there again. Once again, bit of a puzzle game there as well, trying to squeeze everything into this industry zone. With that, 150%. It will also have an effect on my steel consumption, of course. So this is going up a bit now. And it will also have an effect here on my steel beams. And we produce 8 tons per minute now. Great. Meanwhile, I think, yep, there it is. My steel beams are coming in. 150 tons. And we go ahead and happily upgrade more people. Especially here once again. Some workers we can still upgrade. We have lots of timber. This, of course, I would like to use. Those guys here do what? Oh, they need a market. Oh. Oh, the Admiral is attacking a bit. My fisheries. Alright, you can do this. Knowing that there is no real harm to me here. And he, of course, rejoices in the idea of killing some fishermen. And let's just see. I will need to have another marketplace here for the moment. If I want to upgrade those people to workers. Which, of course, I want to. And especially down here, let's have a few more upgrades. And also a few more artisans that we can upgrade, especially here. Finishing off those blocks.
that's really a whole bunch of new in uh, engineers coming into town. Two more artisans here. And we still have 82 tons of steel beams left. I might actually stop now, even though it's very hard as always to stop. There is a plague output uh, outcome again, but we have the hospital not too far away, so this will be fine. And then we can also continue with a few more farmers. So these guys here, I would like to continue. And with the remaining steel beams that we have, by the way, I wanted to build that expert office. And we can do this now safely as well here. Giving me a bit of attraction there again. The next trader comes in in four minutes. So this is the perfect timing really to plan out the docklands once more. Um, and of course, we are still pushing soap and sewing machines pretty hard there right now. The soap is at a whopping 10 surplus, right? So we can really go crazy with that um, since I'm not me meeting the requirements there at the moment. So I'm not surplusing that. Where is my level 600 soap has been exported out of 1000 and the sewing machines is looking at 340. So we can still push this up a bit further. And we could already meet the demand by importing now 600 potatoes um, every 20 minutes out of the soap. This is really primarily for leveling up the soap, right? Together with the sewing machines. So with that, theoretically, we don't need any potato farms anymore. That would be a great milestone because for the first time we can get rid of one full um, agricultural business and that's the potato farms that we have over there. They're still working and no longer they don't. <laughs> Off they go. We still have the schnapps distilleries, of course. And we could probably just import schnapps instead of the potatoes because we don't need potatoes for anything else. So what is the demand for schnapps really? This is where the level of export good is coming in, right? Because soap is not that powerful at the moment. So uh, we need to level it up to make it more uh, valuable. Right now for 200 soap or well, yeah, for 200 soap, that is the maximum that we produce. We only get in 338 schnapps, right? Don't forget, we do need 700 schnapps if we want to meet the whole population demand. So I'm going to get rid of that again. And we're just really going to export the 200 soap. Let's make it 190 um, to have a bit of a buff there to get us the potatoes that we need the process then into schnapps. So this is working. It's not working in any other way at the moment, right? But at least, yeah, we have more space again. Space that we actually need because we're moving our city closer and closer up there i said we wanted to expand and i'm not lying about this <laughs> panagos needs to grow and i'm just going ahead here with another copy and pasted layout actually this time let's make this one a three times two block that we have and as you can see we're cutting into uh we're cutting into those lumberjack huts here now right and this is this is something that we need to rectify as well by moving those lumberjacks up now a bit. And they're moving into these potato areas then that we had, the former potato fields, uh, moving a bit further up. And we can do this thanks to having now enough space again. Oh, wait a second, it's a bit too far away. Make it like so. And this one, uh, it really needs to be here for the 100%. This is also fine still. But we have more space again that we can use. Oh, wait a second, also. One of my ships is under attack. Ah, yep. We are also selling, of course. 50,000. Off you go. Very good. Pushing us to 300,000. And while we are at the greater scheme of things, let's also move to Towi. Because here, of course, our building materials have arrived that make it possible for us to build that commute pier. And with that, we have shared Towi now with Panagos. And with that, we can also now build us those iron mines that I so urgently need, plus the coal mine. Let's do this really now. Where are they? Yeah, you couldn't defeat Paragos with just destroying the fisherman. He is a bit surprised at that, isn't he? And then here we have iron and zinc. Here we have iron and coal. So I can actually build my warehouse somewhere here. And then the iron deposit and the coal deposit. Both delivering to the warehouse. Ship is under attack. That's just a smaller ship passing by. There's the Admiral though coming in again. Uh, my ship is just getting out of space there once more. Perfect. There's another warship here. Move a bit closer into the harbor area again. These are my freshly built ships. And by the way, let's also build another Royal Galleon. Let's make it two Royal Galleons. We get the Supreme Commander Influence Bonus. Thanks to having a big fleet or a bigger growing fleet. 
gives me an attack speed bonus of 17% on ships. Oh, very great. All right, and here we have the next iron deposit. This is actually really useful for us because with that we have eight more tons of iron coming in per minute and four more tons of coal coming in per minute. And this we can of course use to create a new trade rod. I would separate this from the fur trader, Tovido Panagos. And with that, we're just going to get in, yeah, 100 tons of iron and 100 tons of coal. And um, this is really more than enough anyway. It's a very short trade rod. Sea Sponge is going to be on this trade rod starting now. Yeah, and this is working now. Perfect. With that, we have a bit more income. And with that, we can build a few more furnaces again, which we're going to need in order to boost my sewing machine production and let's do this also right away we can build two more furnaces uh, let's have it here once again the dirty industry that's getting a bit busy on the uh, in the ocean there um those two and with that let's build at least one more sewing sh machine factory for now and upgrade that trading post here in the center on top of it very good Let's move on, because we can continue with the city expansion, of course. We got 1,400 farmers ready to upgrade. Let's do this. This whole row we can upgrade now, actually. There we have a plague once more. Uh, there's a hospital. Let's build another hospital then. Choosh. Probably here. I would need to move those houses, though. Plus the fire station. We can squeeze in. And then I can have my hospital just here. That's actually a pretty cool location for a smaller city hospital, right? So these people there, they can also have then a little park area, something like that in between. Since we have the engineers now, we do have one of my favorite ornaments, and that is the fences. <laughs> so we can build one of these fences here, right, with the, the walking paths. So that's the patients. They can walk along the fences here enjoying the day um, and in the middle we have then for example some yeah actually just a temporary growth or something because you can walk along that as well here and here's really just the, the entrance or the exit to that and let's have us a bit of a little plaza area there right in front of that fitting to the to the hospital there as well and on the back or on the front actually we have of course the entrance with doctors they're still in training <laughs> so it's going to take them a while before they can help my population. Take your time. Now, especially here, we can continue with the upgrading. Perfect. Getting us down to 140 um, workers now only. And then, of course, also once again, another whole row of engineers coming in. And with that, we're out of steel beams once more. Oh, look at that. Chush. Another attack. Surprise attack, really. They are going for Panagos Main Harbor. I mean, this is impossible for them at the moment. There's too many flamethrowers here, and they don't have steel ships yet. So, of course, they're getting completely wrecked by my defensive powers. Oh, no, you're stuck in the, in the rocks. That's a shame. As you're going down because of that. Ah, we might actually lose a frigate to that. I'm surprised. Nope, perfect. That was close though. Let's have a look at the loot. It's actually quite a lot. There were a lot of Admiral ships. There's some weapons that we can find here. More weapons? Oh, that's actually go good. More weapons. A lot of weapons that we find here, plus damage shells, something we can activate on the ship to do some extra damage. I think we actually lost the frigate there, right? No, we haven't lost the ship, as far as I can tell. But nice surprise attack there from the Admiral. Let's build us some two more flamethrowers here. Um, I do need to wait though for my steel beams now, so we are really, really limited by construction. Hmm. No, I don't think that I can do anything at the moment to boost my steel beams. 
Eli might now Eli has ore usually of course. Archie has some 36 tons of steel beams again, but that's it. So for the moment I need to wait a bit for steel beams to come in again. One thing we have though is bricks, and that means I can go ahead and continue upgrading those roads. Something I really would like to do, it just makes a difference when you look at the city and all of a sudden you have brick roads instead of dirt roads. And it's so easy now with the upgrade tool. Just do it on the whim like this one here, right? So really quickly. And probably also here a few more. Costing me another 50 tons. Better than capping on, on bricks. As the whole city civilizes a bit more. Steel beams we have. We can use this to upgrade some more people to engineers. Because they really like to pay good amount of taxes. Now looking at Miss Hunt's main city right now, um, as I said, I would like to improve my economic status. And one way we can do this, we can invest a surplus that we have into shares, of course. We can start to invest into other islands. Miss Hunt is not looking so bad. For 330,000 credits, we can get 1,200 of share value out. So this will directly boost my economy. 16,000 so it increases my income and right now I don't need that spare money anyway plus we have a really good income to build a lot of factories quickly but investing them into shares is always a valid option one of these ships is under attack again there's the pirate coming in in full force right now I don't know are we at war with the pirate again oh yes we're at war with the pirate once more um, I could try 34 we are with the ceasefire that's not going to happen so we just have to keep the war going for now we have the defense so i don't worry about that too much there's also a lot of war coming in now and coal but at a price yeah the pirate at the moment is moving all the ships into my region that's of course just a shock reaction <laughs> it's not going to to last she's already pulling some of them out again there was a bit of a skirmish here and of course the pirate usually sends all the ships then to help out. Um, for now though, I will need to keep that clipper here and repair it at least. Where's my, there's my repair crane. That is something we should definitely do. All right, Miss Hunt settled on the third island. She continues her expansion as well. It's slow, but it's steady, right? So they continue almost with that. Was deep in engineer level now. And of course, the more islands they have, the faster their growth is then on top of it. And we need to prepare for that at all times. Now, I would also really like to perhaps work on a new industry or something like that. So we have the, the spectacles, the coffee and the light bulbs. And we can and should have a look at the coffee. The cool thing is Manola is also providing coffee fertility. We have some operas, we have some farmers. So it is the ideal situation right now for us. And in Panagos, we do need around five tons of coffee per minute at the moment and we can do this by building us some three coffee roasters so i would like to calculate around five right now and this would lead to 10 coffee plantations once more we can boost these coffee plantations then as well with some items um, but for now we can make it work somewhere over there and yes we do have the hacienda as well so we could also use the coffee for the hacienda if we want to Let's start with that as well, because the Hacienda will provide some very optimal farm layouts that we can use. And I would like to build the Hacienda really a bit here in the mountains, right? So we have a lot of terrain there available, of course. Uh, it's a lot of hilly terrain though. Down here it's a bit a bit better then. And the Hacienda is kind of like a transition between the city then into the industry zone. So it's kind of like in between for me uh, with that. It's also a little, yeah, residence that we can use. So we can kind of like imagine that we are uh, situated in in the Hacienda. Uh, Bin Bash unveils a beautiful new Hacienda, a home for agricultural innovation. And yeah, well, I, I like to go with that. Let's build us a little path. Um, for the Hacienda, I would like to I would like to start here with a little palm alley that moves them over. Right, so this is really an agricultural home that we have there. Um, and it should look like one. So these alleys, I like a lot for that. And here goes then on the the main road more or less to the other city. Oh, look at that. Mate. Hunt is purchasing back the share immediately. So no chance for me to, to invest into her markets at the moment. Uh, Princess Ching is actually weaker. And I think the Admiral is the weakest right now. 
Yeah. Actually, he's pretty cheap in comparison. Let's take a share of the Admiral. For 800, nine, almost 900, I'll take that. So let's go back. Here's the Ender. And as we can see, the radius is rather big. And I would like to use this now, because with that, we can start building up some coffee plantation. It's five four hundred thousand. That sounds good. Thank you, Anne. I like that a lot. I think I'm going ahead with the road there again. Here starts the mountain area. This is also where we could then have the coffee plantations. Let's just go ahead and start with the first ones. There they are, Hacienda Farm. And the cool thing is these are multi-farms, right? So if we build one of these, we can then have the crop selection, which would be the coffee. We could use any of that regardless of fertility, which is always a great thing. And look at the amount of fields it requires. It's basically none. <laughs> but this is it, right? This is all the fields that this Hacienda needs or this farm needs in order to fully, fully be functional, right? And with that, we can really just plaster a few of them right here in this area. No props. And they produce then a nice amount of coffee for us. And really only with the Hacienda is it possible to start and produce all of that in one area, right? Like in, in Manola. So we can really supply our whole mega city with that, which is just absolutely lovely. And this will push our coffee beans production now to eight. And that is already four coffee beans. So that is already more than we need of coffee roasters. Um, so that is already more than we need because that would be eight coffee per minute. We could also go ahead and just say, let's use the Hacienda. Uh, no, I think, wait a second. For coffee, I think it does not work. We have the brewery. And that's it. So we do need to really build then the coffee roasters. Of course, I'm going ahead and build them in my future to be industry zone. Right now, it's not really one yet. But of course, I'm intending to fully build one here. We have a trade union here. And let's go ahead. The coffee roasters require a bit of space. So we can use three in that area. Uh, we will still need to build also one more warehouse. And then we can build them close to the coffee roasters. These sugarcane plantations will probably disappear again soon. Let's start by building four plus the warehouse and let's upgrade that warehouse on top of it. This is just enough for Breros, pushing us down to 39, but that's still fine. And with that, the next production is on its way and that's the coffee. The good Manolo coffee is coming out now. And the farms here are already diligently working on the fields. In the forest <laughs> because i can't really see myself that often in here probably should also upgrade that warehouse a bit and this is only the beginning we can really plaster the whole area here full with coffee plantations to output the most of it uh, my weapons have arrived nebuchadnezzar and nebuchadnezzar is also going to be on a new trade right now once again i'm separating it from the the, the rum and let's go ahead and get us that coffee in. Now oh, we already have the first ton in Manola. And a new export good is coming out of Manola. The city will grow with that. More money coming in. And of course, the most important thing is Hanagos engineers get their first real engineer item. And this will actually also have a good effect on the economy because coffee gives me plus two engineers per building, but way more important, plus 18 coin. And that is actually quite a lot. So once again, we'll boost our income with that significantly and continue on our road to investors. Stay tuned.